Hey friends, in today's video I want to talk about Weeblock because the comment section has been complaining about Prism Hunters, rightfully so. There's a lot of ability spam all across the board, and my answer lately has been Weeblock. Think about it. You know that there's a smoke, a clone, a swarm grenade. You activate Weeblock, you get the armor lock and you can move around. You can eat the smoke and the swarm grenade, and as soon as all the swarm nodes go away, drop your rift. And then Threadlings fly out, so that if anybody tries to follow up the damage that the Smoke and the Swarm Grenade are doing, they get hit with a bunch of Threadlings. Or you get all your health back. Sometimes I'll throw the Rift beforehand, and they'll Wombo Combo the Rift. I'll pop Weave Walk again, sit in there until all the Swarms go away, and then pop back out and damage them. So I've been comboing this with Hawkmoon. So I shoot him once with Hawkmoon, then I pop Weave Walk, I get to cover... I live to fight another day, and I'm working towards the Paracausal time 6 or 7. Sometimes I can even do Paracausal like 3 or 4. Don't know exactly which one it is. And then throw a Arcane Needle for the kill, which creates a Tangle, which lets me grapple. I also have to be very careful with grapple because of Threat of Ascent. Sometimes I will shoot them with Hawkmoon 6 or 7, and then immediately use a half grapple to reload my weapon very quickly. I'm running Kinetic Holster on my boots, which I also have to be very careful with because if Hawkmoon reloads the entire magazine, I lose my Paracausal stacks. So I have to be very, very cognizant of how long I keep my shotgun or my sniper rifle out. My shotgun, I like to ship between Radar Booster and Icarus Grip depending on if I'm on controller or mouse and keyboard. On mouse and keyboard, I will take the jump shot every single time, but I do like Radar Booster to give me a better sense of where the enemies are. I am using one in-flight compensator. Feels fantastic. I'm using a heavy-handed. That way if I ever do the Hawk Moon shot combo to the melee ability, I can make an Orbalite. Orbalite will give me Thread of Warding. It will heal me. You cannot pick up an orb while in Weave Walk, by the way. So you have to come out of it. Then I have Threat of Isolation, so when I'm in team fights, I can make a random tangle. Healing Rift, of course. And this super, I'm not even going to call it a love-hate relationship. I really dislike this super, and I know it's a skill issue, and I know I have to spend some time in Mayhem with this. I'm just so bad with it, and when I start getting good with it, I imagine I'm going to be able to carry a lot more matches. Right now, I'm the one who needs to be carried because I just can't hit anything with it. So depending on what the map and mode is and what my opponents are using, I will ship between Hawkmoon if I'm playing the grind game and very passive and really valuing my life. I have to shoot through all the healing. Hawkmoon's the answer. If I have to play extremely aggressive, I like Thorn because the Thorn Remnant will reload Thorn and I'll just be able to go on a rampage. Ace, tried and true. Lumina, you can grapple off the Lumina. The timing to it but it's there if i get a giant map i'll go jade rabbit and switch to like an auto rifle or an smg i also have a no feelings right here and i can go the kvostov route you shoot to loot to get the woven mail then here's the most dangerous one you can charge terrible wall in weave lock i'm going to try this out later with controller but i imagine this is going to go crazy with my succession or my heritage these are the mods. These are the fragments. I do want to mention one more thing. I'm not completely tied to just running Strand. Sometimes I will pivot to Shadebinder or Dawnblade or Prism, again, depending on the map. Broodweaver, I like whenever everybody is ability spamming, but as soon as they throw on Conditional Finality and start wising up about what to do, to counter Weeblock, you pretty much have to chase them. So in solo, sometimes it doesn't work because I use Weeblock. I try to drag the enemies out in the open. I succeed, but for whatever reason, my teammates just don't shoot at my opponents. So although it's great in teams, in solo, sometimes you will be just slamming the desk because they just don't shoot anything. For those type of games, I like Shadebinder with Icewear Bolts and Frost Bolts. They'll be able to make plays and... Y'all have seen that build before. I was running Malfeasance whenever everybody was running the healing turrets. 
and I would just go for freezes. So healing, I go stasis, ability spam, I go broodweaver, and when neither of those are present, I go dawnblade. And that's kind of a rarity now, so rare time I play dawnblade. Other than that, I float with dawnblade with a scout rifle or a bow, and I can also use wither horde on dawnblade very nicely. So all the above. When prism comes into play, this is more of a sixes setup where I use devour class item with claw. And this is a nice toolbox setup where it can counter most of the sandbox. I think I like this better than my shade binder for a turret thrower. So I'm probably going to have to make another setup that's focused on all discipline with eye of another world, just like I would run it in the past. So yeah, those are all my swaps for warlock, but for this season right now, until prism hunter is hit, I'm probably defaulting to Broodweaver. Now I'll see you on the next. What kind of super was that? Trust me, you don't got this.
Give the Red Jacks a little wrong. 